Hi everyone, welcome to uh, the first of hopefully many uh, Vivify Ideas interviews where we, uh, where I actually try to get to know our teams, our our processes, uh, and just generally try to try to kind of convey uh, how we operate and uh, why we operate in the ways that we do. Uh, so today, uh, for the first segment, I wanted to pick out our uh, powerful QA team. Uh, to my to my left side is Miodrag, and to my right side Hello. is Andrea. Say hi, guys. Hello. How are you guys doing? We're great. Working from home. Made a little break so we can have this interview. <laughs> Yeah, it's really interesting to work from home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't be taking uh, too much time out of your work from home schedule. Uh, so let's just uh, let's jump right into it, right? So um, the first question that I have and uh, some people who follow our company closely might have is uh, how does the QA team in Vivify Ideas operate and um how many of you are there are you fully dedicated to quality assurance each one of you or do you participate in the development itself as well i can take this one vlad mm, we have ideas uh, team we have ideas qa team is uh hmm flexible unit of versatile individuals. There are, I think, 15 of us, uh, and we are always searching for new people to join our team and uh, to grow and make us better. Uh, we are organized around our team leader, Ogi, uh, who guides us technology-wise uh, and keeps track of every project. Uh, each of us has a dedicated project uh, and a personal development plan as the main responsibility. But uh, if situation demands, uh, we are agile and capable of increasing manpower on a particular project to provide polished products in the shortest amount of time. <clears throat> um, experiences are shared between us uh, and we are always trying to grow as a team and of course as individuals so we can provide the best possible uh, outcome on every project and how would you say uh, the team is divided amongst all our projects like does each member specialize in a certain technology or project type or how exactly does does that work mm. Well, uh, we are always trying to have a, a ratio of one QA per four or five developers. And depending on the project, uh, everyone is certainly uh, specialized in some kind of uh, particular technology which is required for that project. Uh, the majority of team is implementing automated API tests and smoke tests uh, in, let's say, required technology, uh, depending on the project. Uh, and we have uh, experienced colleagues who are always assisting uh, if there is need for assistance. Uh, the type of assistance depends. Uh, sometimes uh, they are assisting in form of technical guidance, review, uh, and implementation, even in some cases. Uh, we are always trying to develop a certain base skill set for uh, each individual member. Uh, and each individual member needs to uh, possess, uh, needs to reach that uh, required level. And when every member of the, our team uh, manages to reach it, uh, we are trying to raise a bar a little bit and grow again as a team. Uh, as uh, per specializations, 
uh, there are some of us who are maybe working on large uh, systems of applications and uh, these particular team members are specialized in uh, uh, development uh, of deploy uh, maintenance of entire system uh, and of course testing of every version before each deploy. Uh, of course, there are more uh, members of the team who are maybe specialized in automated testing of mobile applications or even uh, automated uh, tests of uh, large-scale APIs. And yes, <laughs> question, uh, question is, I think, answered entirely because uh, there are a lot of us and each of us has some kind of specialization which he uh, learned on his projects. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, that makes sense. But let's say, let's say someone with um, no such specialization uh, joins VFI Ideas. Let's say we get a new QA employee. Um, what are the potential career paths that they can take and how can they grow within within our company? I can take this one so Miodra can read a little bit. Uh, so uh, QA career is divided to uh, developing your soft and your hard skills. So hard skills are specific and teachable abilities. <laughs> Uh, they're closely connected to your professional activities. So they're connected with, with job you do every day. If we take a QA as an example, uh, QA can learn different types of hard skills, uh, submitting and validating defects, creating test documentation, reporting, and a lot of other things. Soft skills are based on personal qualities that allow you to communicate and interact with your colleagues effectively. And they're crucial if you want to be a successful team player. So uh, you can grow in both directions. If your stronger side are hard skills, you can continue with uh, your QA promotion. You can go to from junior to QA to meteor, from meteor to senior, from senior to lead software testing specialist, or you can go to development career if you link to the code structure and code development. That is for hard skills. Mm -hmm. And if your stronger side are soft skills and you prefer to develop them and maybe your heart is in communicating with the team or the customer, you can try yourself as a manager. And when I say as a manager, in Vivify Ideas, we have project manager, we have resource managers, we have test lead, we have QA managers. So a lot of uh, manager positions. And the, there is another part, part in uh, soft skills, uh, part of business analysis. Uh, if you have that gift to understand application better than anyone else in the team, and you're an experienced QA engineer, you can switch path to business analysis and be successful in, in this branch. And of course, as, as Miodrak said, uh, in, in Vivify Ideas development plan is, is everything. So every, every uh, person that comes to QA team will be directioned to the right path. So, Ognian, our QA manager, will will see where where do you lean and where is your future in the company. So it's it's a lot easier that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, now uh, we've already talked about this on uh, on our website, uh, and uh, we've also created the uh, Vify Scrum. Uh, project management app so it's safe to say that we're uh, we're pretty agile right um now how does qa survive in in an agile specifically scrum environment and um uh let me let me let me kind of rephrase that 
what do we do to keep you guys from becoming overloaded by the end of each sprint? We do planning. <laughs> <laughs> In in agile environment, uh, QA is some kind positioned between uh, the team and their developing tasks and and increment on the other side. So the main thing to evade overloading is to do the planning in the right way. Divide the stories in the small parts so tester can do its job faster and easier. And if we do planning wrong and make a big chunks and big stories and big tasks, they will be finished too late and a tester will be under the pressure at the end of the sprint and maybe he will uh, approve something that he shouldn't be approving and that should never be done. So one again, once again, Planning in agile environment is everything and planning needs to be done in, in correct way, small chunks, small tasks, and, and uh, to be able to know what is the potential, what can be done in one sprint and no one will feel the pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, when we talk about the acceptance criteria, for example, the how big of a role does QA play in the initial uh, determination of what's important in a in a certain project? Are you how how included are you in that in that process? Uh, well, Vlad, I could answer this one. Uh, certainly, the role is big. Role is big, and capability to determine what's important and what's not even before a single line of code is uh, written, it separates uh, great QAs from the average ones. Absolutely. Say. Yeah. Uh, you need to be especially uh, versatile and quick-minded uh, to understand uh, newly introduced uh, business logic and uh, make immediate value. Uh, so uh, that's... That's uh, the biggest quality uh, of QA, which uh, he gets with experience, and that's something which uh, we try to uh, nurture in our team. Uh, and we value our experience members a lot because of that capability. Uh, well, that's that's uh, also extremely important for our clients because uh, if QA can. Uh, provide immediate value uh, that will, of course, uh, reduce the development time and products are shipped uh, better and faster. Well, speaking of uh, delivering value to clients and having good products, right? Um, QA obviously requires that you have a full grasp of the industry your project is targeting, right? And um, and essentially, you need to know what functionalities are essential for that target market. And how does one prepare for that? And what kind of research goes into um, familiarizing yourself with these, uh, let's say, new or previously un untackled uh, projects? Mm, I can take this one. I can follow up. Uh, the The main information provider for QA should be a project manager. Mm -hmm. His job is to contact with the customer uh, by daily basis and understand uh, its needs of, of project and project targeting. Uh, before any planning is done uh, on the project, there should be a meeting with project manager present where he present the team, the project, the functionalities and everything around the, the project, the, the target group. But anyhow, nothing stops from nothing stops you from from do research by yourself to explore other products on the web and create a picture where where is your project positioned and what are the main functionalities needed for project to work correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
I've got a, I've got a really a quick one, a bit of a joke that I prepared. You're <laughs> stranded on an island. You can only choose one. <laughs> Scripted or exploratory testing. Go. <laughs> so let, let me uh, tell to everyone what is scripted and what is exploratory testing first. Scripted testing is uh, follows a path that is written by a tester themselves or, or someone else. Uh, the script includes test cases, test steps, and everything is documented. documented. Uh, there can be no deviation from the path, from the script, and tester jobs is, is like follow the path. And exploratory testing, on the other hand, rely on the tester uh, to develop the, the testing path on the go. It's not exactly testing free for all, <laughs> but it allows the tester to go where an end user might, might rather go than a script. So. Of course, both methodologies have their shortcomings and scripted testing can simply lead a tester to desired, re desired result. And on the under, other hand, if you go free roam and, and develop your own plan, it's maybe it can lead you to the wrong direction. But for, for me as a person, if I need to choose only one, uh, I would say that I'm exploratory oriented. I like to, to start a project from scratch and make my own plans, explore the entire project, the entire application, find the weak points, find the places where bug can be born in the future. So that, that is my goal to, to discover things. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would always pick exploratory. Miedrak, what about you? Well, I would say both. <laughs> I would say both because uh, you certainly need to have a, uh, you need to have a, at least a, a, the major part of your, the most important part of your application, you need to have covered with some scripted testing because some part of uh, application will uh, not be changed. Uh, will not be changed a lot and it has to work as it is uh, and you need always tests which will always pass especially in the big projects uh, which are in production and of course exploratory you need to explore to find some let's say mysterious bugs some kind of uh, mysterious uh, uh, situations which uh, can't be scripted and you need to cover those things as well. And yeah, I think a good tester or let's better say great tester team uh, will cover both of those <laughs> uh, approaches to the testing itself. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm certain that we or you as a QA team, you cover all of these, all of these levels of testing. Now, when it comes to uh which test cases to automate um what goes into that decision now, that is something that I, that I, that I never quite understood um what is for example our ratio of automated versus um manual tests and how do we decide what's what's best for a project uh, i can follow up this with this question mm -hmm. because I really love automation. <laughs> um, I can start with with telling that that uh, every project needs a smoke test and regression test to be written and automated. And what is a smoke test and what is regression test? Smoke test is fast paced test. Uh, he covers uh, basic functionalities of the project and, and it shows us quickly, do we uh, test the new functionality at all? Maybe the new functionality broke something in the code. We never know that. So smoke test is our prime weapon to, to fight with, with bugs. And 
after the smoke test, we do a regression test. Regression test is much bigger and it, it, it covers everything that should be covered by, by automation. Uh, everything that, that smoke test missed, uh, all, for example, all, all, all the translations or the labels, all, all the buttons, everything around it. So you, you need to, to know what, what have been changed. On, on your application. So uh, I would I, I would always say that that we need to automate as much as we can, and uh, for, and we need to automate from project to project. Every project is different. Maybe one project needs to be to need to have aut automation of accessibility. The other needs a load test. The third one needs uh, stress testing, performance testing, or something around it. And about manual testing, uh, we do manual test on the parts that runs only once, that uh, are without predictable result, and uh, tests that need uh, visual confirmation. And that's all. Mm -hmm. So we we automate as much as we can. And would you, would you say that is probably the future of testing yeah, as such? Yeah, yeah I, I would I would say that uh, in time uh, every QA needs to to develop in the automation direction and and be as good as possible in there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it, it it is faster. It's 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 much easier to work like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that is the future. But what about now? <laughs> the date we're recording this Perfect. is the twentieth of May of the year two thousand twenty. The year where everyone in the world, unfortunately, was struck with a terrible disease. Now I want to know your story and your perspective on how our company is dealing with the COVID-19 uh, and how it has impacted our processes. Because I know for a fact, as a social media manager, I can do my job from anywhere in the world most of the time, right? And I have actually no idea whether you can do yours completely remotely <laughs> so please let tell me can you <laughs> will you answer this one first <laughs> uh for for me uh covid19 made no impact at all on on my daily job because in in vivify ideas we do a good planning we have remote days and we nurture remote days, and we are we are a well trained group of people to to work outside of the office. Mm -hmm. I would say like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to completely agree. There was no impact on our testing process uh, from the very beginning of uh, each uh, team member's employment. Uh, we have ideas. Uh, uh, offers optional remote to all all of us and uh, there are i think uh, 100 days every year yeah. which can uh, we yeah uh, every qa can work 100 not not only qa every uh, developer qa or every employee can every employee can work uh, for 100 days from remote remotely and uh, we are well used to it, I'd say. Uh, so there was absolutely no impact on our testing process, nor development process. I would say everything is smooth <laughs> as it was. <laughs> so, well, apart apart from our daily lives, <laughs> out of the job. <laughs> um, well, uh, yeah, I mean... I, I can't wait to get to get back into into the office um, and hang out with you guys physically. But I appreciate that you've um, taken the time and 
kind of got on the call with me and answered answered these questions. Uh, I honestly, I I think I think uh, people will find them interesting. It's interesting to hear a perspective. And um, thank you, thank you, Miedrak. Thank you, uh, Andrea, for being here. Yeah. And um, yeah, okay. I think there will be quite a few more um, interviews with uh, different. Um, different departments that we'll cover in the future. So if you stuck around till till the end, uh, follow us on all our social media channels, and uh, there will be more. Uh, so that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>